Hi friends! That was so enthusiastic, but I'm so excited for today's video. Today we are doing a reading vlog. If you haven't watched these videos, it's basically you just following me as I vlog myself reading and reading different books. I'm gonna chat to you about them in between. This is specifically going to be a fall reading vlog, so it's gonna be all things cozy. We're gonna get up to some bookish stuff. I'm going to vlog as I read, so you're gonna get my reactions. We're gonna talk about it. There's not gonna be spoilers in case you wanna read any of the books. I'm officially in the new book nook. I built a reading corner for myself in my room and oh my gosh, I'm already obsessed. Like I am, I'm gonna insert the footage of us putting together the bookshelf. I had Renee help me because I'm literally useless when it comes to that type of thing. So he basically just did the whole thing. Actually, I did nothing. I just sat in the back and watched. So I'm gonna insert that footage now so you can kind of see the making of me putting this together and then I'll give you a little, little tour. Success guys, first pieces in. Not very organized but this is kind of what it's looking like right now i have a stool over there this is from target um it looks a bit bigger than i thought it was going to but i i like it i wanted like a side table for me to be able to stack books on put my drinks on this is like a little beanbag chair i got it is from amazon but i believe target sells it too so i'll have everything linked i got this little pumpkin blanket to make it super cozy from target and the star of the show this bookshelf i got it from amazon and i love it i feel like it fits the space really well and then there's this little paper lamp next to it which i love so much i feel like it just completes the space and i'm also going to show you some books that i got within the last few weeks and i don't think i've showed in any other vlog or anything let's start with what i got at barnes right now these purchases were honestly so random not even on my wish list not even on my radar but i saw them and i immediately knew i was like they're coming with me I got the two books from Crescent City by Sarah J. Math. It's because look at these special edition covers. Look at how intricate and pretty they are. Like, wow. And now with my book nook, I feel like I have my own mini library and I just knew I wanted to put these up there. I wanna start collecting more like special editions if I happen to see them because I think it would be really fun. My books make me feel so cozy and so like, comforted. That sounds so deep, but it's true. And this book came in today, oh. And then the last book I got at Barnes right now was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I know she is the author of Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows, but I saw this on the table and I read the back and it just seemed really interesting. The next books that I'm gonna haul are just like recent purchases. Today in the mail, I got The Seven Year Slip. This is by Ashley Poston. I believe it's about a girl who meets a man that is seven years past or in the future i'm not sure next we have divine rivals by rebecca ross i have also heard so many people talk about this some people rate it four stars some people rate it six stars but overall i've heard really good things next book i picked up at target the other day is unfur my enemy by olive e. blake a lot of people love her writing she's the author of the atlas six and i believe this is like a modern day fantasy that takes place in new york city and then lastly we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Fourth Wing for sure, Divine Rivals, and The Seven Year Slip are like the next three I for sure want to read after the book that I'm currently reading, which is A Court of Wings and Ruin. I don't know how far I am because I've been reading it on my Kindle. I may be like 15 or 20% through. I'm not sure. Also, quickly, I got the last sticker in for my Nook. It's like a little Pinterest cake that says Book Lover. I think it's so cute. And I think I want to put it I wanted to put it right here but I don't know if it's gonna cover the other stickers I don't I'm damn it okay well now I'm not really sure what I should do 
The only other thing I want to do probably today besides read is organize this bookshelf and fill it up. I hope you can see the pure joy on my face right now. I just wanted to pop in and say thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this reading vlog. I'm so happy to partner with them on this video because it is so fitting. If you don't know what Book of the Month is, let me tell you a little bit about the experience when you sign up for their subscription. They are a monthly book subscription service where at the beginning of each month, they usually announce around five to seven new titles for members to choose from. You as a member are able to choose a title that you want to receive as your book of the month. And you can also add other books to your order at a discounted price. And then the books will arrive at your door in this really beautiful blue box. But let me show you the titles that I got for this month. I was so excited when I saw that they had Allie Hazelwood's new book available, Check and Make. This is a young adult romance book. And if you don't know Allie Hazelwood, she's a very well-known, well-loved author in the romance space. And then the second book I got is The Last Love Note by Emma Gray. I had never heard of Emma Gray and this is like the perfect example of how they offer like really well-known authors and then you're able to expand your taste because you get to choose from other titles that you may have never heard of and it also helps you explore into other genres that you may not have necessarily been inclined to pick up. Book of the Month also just launched a really cool feature on their platform where now they're offering audiobooks so you can choose up to two audiobook titles and one of the greatest parts is that the value of the novels is a much cheaper option than actually just buying them individually. They offer great prices on new released hardcover book so if you're looking to add some fun new books to your library in a budget-friendly way then I would definitely check out bookofthemonth.com and for a limited time you can get your first book for five dollars if you use the code for you thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video and partnering with me on it a bit this morning and i'm gonna read some right now it's sunday so it's like the perfect day to just stay home super cozy and read uh, but first let me give you like an official tour of the book nook because it's pretty much done this is what it looks like you guys kind of already saw it that chair is from target that chair is from amazon blanket from target and here we have the bookshelf itself so the way i organized it is i did it by genre i have romance at the top and i kind of tried to like color code them and then i have fantasy and sci-fi on the second middle part and i have all of unread like tbr stuff over here so these are unread those are unread these are unread part of a series and then down here i have thriller and mystery and then this one back here that you can't see too well i have like immediate tbr book i'm so 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 happy with it let me give you guys a little bit of a like check-in where i am with the book first you guys know that i'm reading a court of wings and ruin by sarah j mass obviously part of the akatar series and i'm like 80 pages through so i haven't made much of a dent in this book it's huge literally a brick so far all that's really happened is we're basically like back in the summer court we're following Feyre. i don't want to give spoilers but she's definitely on her mission and that's kind of what we're following right now and we don't know what's going on with like her family and reese i think that's how you say his name i don't think it's rysan i think it's resand but let me know and so that's basically like all that's happened so far. It's very much the intro of the book. I'm at the point where I'm like, it's been so many months since I read the second and first book. I'm basically in the process of like jogging my memory when they bring up new topics or creatures or characters or types of characters. I'm like trying to remember what they are without Googling it because I already Googled something that I thought I forgot, but actually just hadn't taken place yet. It was apparently a major plot point and I just spoiled it for myself. So I'm kind of done Googling things and I'm just gonna try and figure it out as I go. And I will update you guys with my thoughts. If you guys don't know what this is about, this is the third book in the Akatar series. I don't know how to describe Akatar as a whole, also because I haven't finished the series. It is a fantasy series that follows a girl named Feyre as she is introduced to the land of Fey. We kind of follow her since the first book as she's introduced as a mortal to like this land of Fey and all the different courts of this fantasy world. They're high lords and things get tangled and twisted and this is the third book in the series where we're basically following Feyre. She's on a mission of sorts and I know I can't talk about it because I don't want to spoil it. <laughs>
Initial reactions right now. I'm on page 130. So cute. I'm obsessed. We're getting like reintroduced to the gang and the best reunion just happened and it's so cute. I'm fully like back in it. It took me a little bit, but I feel like I'm like really feeling for the characters again and feeling connected to them. It's going so well and it's getting so cute with the reunions. Okay, I do have to say I'm almost on page 260 and they are dropping so many good like little Easter eggs like now they're revealing more about Nesta and like who and like what she is. So that definitely gets me interested because I feel like I have super low motivation to read the last book in the series just because I know it's like a whole change of POVs kind of but it definitely gets me excited when they drop little Easter eggs like this because now I'm getting more interested about her character and intrigued about her character and I hear that people literally say that she's their favorite so i want to understand why i want to be intrigued by it and sarah j mass is dropping great little easter eggs on like why she is a very strong character and going to be a main character i think what i love so much about these books is and like fantasy books in general is like the cozy setting and imagery specifically because it's obviously not real so when they're describing valeris it's just like i'm imagining like the most beautiful city that overlooks like water and is so lit up and like kind of goes down into like a coast i've seen some art of it of like what people draw of valeris and that's like exactly how i imagine it and i just feel like it's the best place to read about it's so cute and cozy when you're reading about it and they make it seem so beautiful it, the way i imagine it's set up like on top of a hill so i love reading about valeris and it sounds just like i don't know like a dream place like this book is so thick guys i don't know how long it's gonna take me to get through it but we're gonna keep reading <laughs> crazy just happened. I have 15% left of this book. haul of stuff that I ordered last week because I am fully back in the Akatar obsession. So I ordered some merch from Etsy. I have been waiting for this. The second I saw it was delivered, I ran straight down to my mail room. First, we have this brown crew neck. They're all crew necks, by the way. Oh my gosh, so cute, embroidered. And it says, to the stars who listen and the dreams that are answered. 
so cute. One of the cutest Raisang quotes ever. And I just needed it. Next, I have a gray one. And this is, and it says Valeris Art Festival. And then look at the little details. Arcaron Art Center, like Feyre's last name. And then there's a little like art piece of Valeris on the canvas. Like that's so cute. And there's different colors in all of these. The last one that I got is, this has like this really beautiful screen printing of Valeris on it. I love like the mountain, the little starlight stuff down there. And it says city of starlight. There was this other really pretty one that I had in my cart. It was kind of like a more elaborate painting of Valeris. And then the Etsy shop literally closed while the piece was in my cart. And I was so sad and upset, but I got this one instead. And it's still really pretty. I saw on TikTok that the last 100 pages of Aquawar are like when everyone's crying. I have no idea what happens but I need to experience that and record it. So I'm going to record my reaction for you. I wanted to give a recap because this morning I finished A Court of Wings and Ruin and I have just felt so many different things since finishing this book and I need to give you my thoughts. I guess because of the page count, this would technically be like two smaller books in one, but so far in the vlog, we've only read this book. First, let me just say the rating for this book, it has to be five stars. It's just, it is five stars for me. I absolutely loved it. I, I did love it just as much as I thought I was going to. I know some people have their thoughts about this one versus like the second one. I feel like the second one is more of the fan favorite, but I think for me, honestly, I liked this one better, a little bit better, but I like both for like their own reasons. The second one has a lot of romance. This one has much less romance. I feel like a lot of this book is building up to the big war and there's like some battles that lead up to it as well. And there's so much like political talk, talk amongst the different courts, amongst the different high lords, building alliances and teams, finding out about enemies and betrayals and all of that. And there's just so much that takes up, I would say like the first half to three quarters of the book. I loved so much getting to see Feyre be like a really strong character in this book. I feel like she really knew who she was and accepts who she is. And then like the different little, I guess like adventures she herself has to go on for her court and seeing her like be successful throughout all that and like strong throughout all that was like one of my favorite things. I loved following her journey. I feel like it's been crazy character development since the first book, which is why I love reading series because you get to live with a character for so long and you definitely see so much of her character character development in this book like the strong female lead that she was and that like her partner let her be i don't know if saying his name is a spoiler so i'm not gonna say it in case you haven't read it but if you have you know exactly who i'm talking about so love him i also loved getting more of the friend group amarin more seeing nesta and elaine kind of come into it and find their place in all of it cassian of course i just feel like and asriel i feel like i fell in love with like each of them and i wish i had gotten more of them but i wonder if that's like what the following books are going to be about since the second book that's like been one of my highlights of the series um is getting to like see Feyre find people they care about her and getting to know them and they're all like so cool in their own way. I truly loved the buildup of the war and getting to see like the alliances be built. I was so curious the entire time what was gonna happen and how it was gonna play out. And it was definitely an emotional roller coaster. I think especially towards the end, there was a plot twist that took me completely by surprise. I was crying with some of them. I just, that's how you know it's a five star read is when you like feel for them. And then when you're not reading the book, you're like thinking about it and you like wish you were reading the book. And a lot of people think that the third one drags out and is a lot of jargon purely about like battle and like strategies for the battle but i really liked it the relationships were already established so it was just fun to see them kind of be themselves throughout it like you didn't the romance was established there wasn't really building with that anymore because that was mainly just the second book and now you just kind of got to see them be like strong fierce leaders in their own way. I loved seeing the alliances and the courts coming together. So if you don't really like political fantasy and you just like 
more romance fantasy, then you probably would like the second one better. I feel like I have a taste for both. So I really liked both and I really, really, really loved this one. I did tab along the way, but I ended up reading a lot of it on my Kindle. I mean, my Nook, sorry. I'm happy about that. I am sad it's the last Feyre POV one because I want more face sand in it. I'm sure we'll get more of her in the next books. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a tiny spoiler section because I need to rant to you and vent to you about what I felt about some of these plot points. So if you haven't read the book, fast forward to the timestamp on the screen so I don't spoil anything for you. Okay, first of all, Faysand, Feyre and Rysan, I just need to reaffirm how much I love them and how much I love him, love him so much. And I love reading about them. And I just, I love their dynamic. And now that she's high lady and he's high lord and they're giving this like power couple. So I love seeing Feyre as high lady. And I love that like, she was the only one that had that title and like there was no other high lady in Printhian and he was the first one to do that for her. Like, okay, swoon. I do wish I got more romance. Do wish there was more mixed in because it was heavily, heavily war. And though I liked it, I would have liked longer romance scenes. I feel like we got super short snippet. Makes me feel like I still don't have closure. And I know that the next books are like not about them, but that was like the only complaint I guess that I had. I think my favorite scene from the book was when Feyre and the gang had to go to the meeting with all the high lords and just like first of all the descriptions that sarah j mass laid out for that scene was insane she described every high lord all of their like little crews that whole scene was just so fun and like entertaining for me it was high stakes there was tension love triangle tension because tamlin showed up and like bursted in and then just like the fighting in between the different high lords and then Rysan asserting his power as like the most powerful high lord one thing that made me super 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 sad besides the death of her father was the death of the serial i actually knew this was coming i accidentally read a spoiler about it but it didn't make me less sad it was so freaking sad when it was dying on the floor and Feyre had to leave and she was like crying over it yeah i think i am very excited for nesta and cassian oh my gosh that final scene like on the battlefield where cassian gives her a kiss and is like my only regret in this life is that we didn't have more time like immediately yes and those are my thoughts i loved it the battle so high stakes when I thought Amarin betrayed them I was jaw on the floor but then of course we love her because she was just doing what she had to do in order for them to win the battle it was such an epic power move when Nesta and Elaine beheaded the king of Highburn. I also knew that was happening because I accidentally spoiled it for myself. Don't Google. If you're reading a book, just don't Google. Those are all my thoughts. I know this is about the winter solstice. I'm super excited to read this one. Now what we're gonna do, the second book of this reading vlog is we're gonna do something easy, but still kind of in the season of like fall. I'm gonna read Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. But I thought for a reading vlog, it would be fun to like binge one more book, kind of a different genre. Okay, I wanted to do an update on the good girl bad blood because I'm about 110 pages into it. I'm on chapter 11 and I don't have major thoughts yet, but I just thought I would at least update you on like what's going on. So basically this is, like I said, part of the good girl's guide to murder series. And in the first one, in short, it is about this girl named Pip who investigates a murder that happened in her town a few years back for her senior capstone project and Throughout it, all these secrets are unveiled and all these secrets about like her friends and the people she knows. And so in this book, basically what's happening so far is Pip 
has a podcast that was like published about the murder case that she solved in the first book. For this one, she is helping her friend Connor find his missing brother, Jamie. And that's pretty much honestly all I know. The first 100 pages have so far been like just setting the scene for the book. What has changed since the last one? Pip now has a podcast and it's like top of the charts. So she's much more popular now. And her friend came to her because his brother is missing and he wants her to use like her platform to help try and solve the murder again. But she kind of like in the first book lost herself throughout the first investigation and became super obsessed with it. So she was hesitant to do it again. But I'm in the part where she like basically is deciding to dive back into the world of investigating. Sorry, my camera just died. I'm wondering if like we're gonna get to see any resolution from like the first book or if this is just like a completely different story, just like a whole new take on like Pip's investigating. I'm liking it okay so far. I'm not super into it, um, to be honest. It just feels kind of exactly like the first one. And I wonder if they're gonna tie in any like scandalous like storylines from the first one or I feel like I'm just like in the early part of it. I don't really know where the story's going. I'm going to just work on finishing this tonight and tomorrow. But that's it. I'm going to read for the rest of the night. Okay guys, I wanna do a quick update on where I am in Good Girl, Bad Blood. So I'm on page 289. We don't have much of the book left and we're at the point where Jamie has been missing for about six days. So I thought I would update a little bit on what's happening and what I'm thinking. So we're kind of getting to the point in the book where Pip is narrowing down suspects and her investigation is getting much more thorough. You can kind of see the plot lines like actually forming and taking place to where like this book is gonna end. I'm currently confused on if Jamie's alive, if he's dead or if he's just missing. And I wonder how and why he's gone. I love that the author has kind of brought in some different storylines from the first one. Like she includes this anonymous girl that has been like luring Jamie in and she somehow has to do with why he went missing. She was basically like a catfish that like lured him in over social media and was like, and she like made him fall for her. And then she ended up asking him to do some really weird things. And then he went missing. So that has become like a huge part of the storyline, which I think is also super interesting. Cause now we're like wondering who she is and her name is Layla. So we're kind of at the part where where Pip is trying to figure out who Layla is and they are all just like wondering at this point since it's almost been a week if Jamie's dead or if he's alive. Pip is kind of getting to that point again. You can tell like from the first book where the investigation is almost driving her like crazy because she like can't stop thinking about it. She's obsessing over it, but that's usually when the book like really picks up. So I'm excited to see where it goes. You can kind of see her starting to throw away her schoolwork and just like want to solve this case, which is why these books remind me so much of PLL because they're the girls, if you've ever watched Pretty Little Liars, are like literally never doing anything for high school. They're always just investigating like whatever mystery they're trying to solve, which is exactly what Pip is doing. And she has Ravi helping her and Connor, obviously, which is Jamie's brother. Slowly, we're getting more reveals. Like she was able to get into his laptop. She was able to cross some more people off the suspect list. I wonder if he's being held hostage. That's just kind of where my mind is going. I feel like Holly Jackson wouldn't kill him off. Also because this is like a young adult one. So I just don't know if it would like even go there. But it would also be really interesting if he is actually like dead. Yeah. There's just some questions floating around. You can definitely tell the book is shaping up to like end and kind of have a big bang at the end. And I'm also wondering if the end of it ties into the third book. Like, I don't know if these are all kind of standalone stories or if it's gonna flow into the next one, but I'm curious how she makes the last one different from these two, because this one's much more standalone has nothing to do with the Andy Bell case that we kind of read about in the first one. But we see a lot of the same characters and they're kind of wrapped up. It's all very connected loosely, but still like very standalone. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see if he's alive or not. My money is on that he's being held hostage somewhere and I don't know why, but I'm curious to find out. It's fine. 
finally time to end this video. Oh my gosh, what a moment that we finally made it here. I know for you it only feels like 20 minutes, but for me, this video has been ongoing for like four weeks. If you couldn't tell, the seasons have literally like changed in the back. Like this started Halloween and now we're in full Christmas mode. So it was just such an adventure getting here. Things were happening behind the scenes and this just ended up taking way longer than I thought. And I want to give you the review on Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson because I'm officially done with it. I know this is just a mini reading vlog because I just finished two books, but let's go over this one. I say my rating for this as of right now is probably four stars. I think I really, really enjoyed the last like 150 pages. That's when I felt like it really picked up and I was like turning the pages, wanting to know what was gonna happen next. It was when I got super into it, the mystery started to develop and we started getting more answers. I did feel like it was kind of dragging on before that. So I think that's why it's not five stars for me. I mean, I think it was a YA mystery done well. It's definitely not gonna be as maybe dark and twisted as an adult mystery. So you kind of have to go into it knowing that, but the plot line of it was still interesting. And I still was shocked by the plot twists in the second half of the book. I didn't really see it coming when she was able to solve the mystery of Jamie's case. There was a lot of aspects to it that I wasn't expecting. And as she kept like pulling them out, I was like, oh, that's not what I thought was gonna happen. So I thought Holly Jackson did really well in that aspect, like coming up with like completely different storylines than the last one. I was kind of worried it was gonna be too similar. And of course, like how outrageously spontaneous can a teenager investigating a murder case be? But I still think she does it really well. She doesn't make it too dark, but I feel like it got dark enough to be like an interesting mystery thriller at the end. I overall like the series. I just wonder how like the next book's gonna be different because I don't know if it gets like a bit repetitive, like Pip just like investigating every time. I guess we'll just have to see um, when I'm in the mood to read that one, but I did like this one overall. I like that she includes like pages like this that aren't necessarily just like text of the book. It's more of like a podcast transcript and like there will be maps you can follow along with like the investigation. So it's always fun and interactive in that way. A very easy read, something if you just wanna pick up a quick mystery that's not too heavy or too dark or is gonna scare you because this one definitely won't scare you in my opinion. So that is going on my shelf and that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for being so patient with this reading vlog. So, so much happened in between, which is why it took so long, but I promise they will get better. It was my first ever reading vlog. So now I kind of know like I definitely, when I want to film these, need to set more time aside to read and be more intentional with it. So maybe just take a week to film a reading vlog and not film other videos. I was filming a bunch of other videos while filming this one. And I think that's why I didn't get like enough time to just finish this one faster. But nonetheless, I still put all the footage together. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna get better at it. Okay, this was my first one. Definitely like a passion video for me because I love, love watching reading vlogs. Something different. If there's anything else different, a different type of vlog or video that you wanna see from me, let me know. I am now taking like Christmas slash vlog miss like concept video requests if you have any requests for the vlogs if you want to see me do a certain thing i'm gonna have to do my annual gingerbread building q a so anything like that that you want to see in a video for the season let me know please and if you want to see like a winter reading vlog i can for sure do that make sure to like and subscribe go follow me on instagram all my other contents over there i love you all and i will see you in my next video god bless you guys